Uh, but want to start with um, Kamala Harris speaking uh, a- after she spoke with uh, Bibi Netanyahu. Um, I don't know if yesterday you played the uh, um, her statement or showed her statement in the uh, wake of the protests. It had happened a little uh, later. We discussed it. Yeah, I mean, my I hadn't noticed it was on VP letterhead, right, versus the campaign saying something. I think that's notable. She's trying to walk a tightrope of campaigning and attempting to differentiate herself while also not undermining the administration that she's still a part of. The statement was still bad, um, kind of a boilerplate Democratic statement, but still bad, mostly in the sense of like, it didn't account for the possibility that the people that did that graffiti, we have no idea who did that, right? Um, and it painted the rest of the protesters, which included family members of the hostages as right. participating in anti-Semitism. Um, but the thing about what the next few months are going to be like, and it's going to be contentious <laughs> is that she's going to have that tension throughout which is trying to campaign and maybe be uh, create some daylight between her and biden and also still be a part of an administration that in theory is pursuing this delicate ceasefire as well so every part of her public commentary is going to be as dissected as anything and uh, this is uh, the speech that she gave or i should say the her words after speaking with uh, Bibi Netanyahu um, uh, yesterday. I have met with the families of these American hostages multiple times now, and I've told them each time they are not alone, and I stand with them. And President Biden and I are working every day to bring them home. I also expressed with the Prime Minister my serious concern about the scale of human suffering in Gaza, including the death of far too many innocent civilians. And I made clear my serious concern about the dire humanitarian situation there, with over two million people facing high levels of food insecurity, and half a million people facing catastrophic levels of acute food insecurity. What has happened in Gaza over the past nine months is devastating. The images of dead children and desperate, hungry people fleeing for safety, sometimes displaced for the second, third, or fourth time. We cannot look away in the face of these tragedies. We cannot allow ourselves to become numb to the suffering and I will not be silent. Thanks to the leadership of our President Joe Biden, there is a deal on the table for a ceasefire and a hostage deal. And it is important that we recall what the deal involves. The first phase of the deal would bring about a full ceasefire, including a withdrawal of the Israeli military from population centers in Gaza. In the second phase, the Israeli military would withdraw from Gaza entirely, and it would lead to a permanent end to the hostilities. It is time for this war to end, and end in a way where Israel is secure, all the hostages are released, the suffering of Palestinians in Gaza ends, and the Palestinian people can exercise their right to freedom, dignity, and self-determination um the and and i just want to correct something i think uh on your behalf emma the what the actual f says emma do you really think her speech wasn't that much different from biden's or the boilerplate democrat instead of talking points that was in reference to a response to the uh, protesters i mean this speech and again it's just a uh speech or uh comments or however you want to call it um, is definitely different rhetoric than yes. Biden has been using. Um, and uh, it, 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 you know, that can only go as far as it can go. Um, and it may not be sufficient for um, 
you know, uh, folks who voted uncommitted. There's certainly some uncommitted delegates in, uh, I think, in Minnesota who have come out and and, and spoken to this. Um, there are uh, others who um, want, I guess, more explicit uh, um, um, uh, uh, rhetoric uh, and perhaps a, a pledge to condition military aid. Um, and I think, you know, uh, it, it will be seen if she will go that far uh, in the coming weeks. You know, uh, um, she's been the candidate for, for five or six days. She is still a member of the administration. Um, but the rhetoric has changed. That's sort of uh, necessary, but insufficient. Um, I, I know, Emma, you were looking at uh, 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 some, what Trita Parsi was writing. Yeah, let's uh, maybe we can pull that up, Bradley. I sent it a little bit earlier in our chat, not uh, the Trita Parsi comments, not the not the Axios article. We can get to that in a second. Um, but Trita, who we've had on the show a bunch of times and is quite critical uh, of the Gaza policy by the Biden administration. Um, I sent it earlier, uh, Bradley. I can just read it at least here. Just read um, it for now. If I can find it, <laughs> just take takes one second. Um, he said, Kamala clearly broke with Biden on Israel in terms of rhetoric and tone, but there was also substance uh, substance shift. Biden has disingenuously claimed that Hamas blocked a ceasefire deal. By saying that she urged Netanyahu to, quote, clinch the deal, Kamala pointed to the real obstacle. And that is the th these are the kind of subtleties that we're going to need to look for, I think, in the coming, as I was saying earlier, to indicate movement on that front. It's I wish she was she were going further, but she has to both balance the her role in the administration, as I said earlier, and her campaign. I hope she meets with the uncommitted people. I hope she gives a more concrete answer on this. But this other news item was important, too, that Netanyahu was reportedly pissed by her comments, both her private comments to him and what she said in public. This was a uh, report in Axios, Barak Ravid, uh, naturally. Um, if we could go to the part where it says that the Israeli sources said they did not approve of uh, or like her speech, the quote is, Two Israeli officials um, said Netanyahu's meeting with Biden was much more constructive uh, than their meeting with Harris, than his meeting with Harris. Um, it's hard for me to see. The font's kind of small. But, um, yeah, two Israeli yeah, it, officials say, and said Netanyahu's meeting with Biden was much more constructive than his meeting with Harris, but stressed the meeting with the vice president wasn't tense or difficult. Uh, the Israeli official says Netanyahu and his team were caught off guard by Harris's on-camera statement and taken aback by its tone, which they said sounded much more critical than Biden's. Harris's statement after the meeting was much more critical than what she told Netanyahu in the meeting, one Israeli official claimed, although uh, at the same time, <laughs> they're also claiming in that article that the meeting with Biden was more constructive. So I'm not sure how you can have it both ways in that, uh, to that degree. So... She's trying to signal. Um, I wish she would go further, but I think the overall sentiments I want people to internalize is that we're in a better position than with Biden in the White House to make meaningful changes in, in this genocide um, because the point is that she at least is showing responsiveness <laughs> to the outrage amongst the base about this. And that that's what we can hope for in terms of just like a practical reality right now. So in the meantime, we keep pushing, but I think we also should indicate that or draw the contrast that, uh, you know, Biden's taking like a hundred million dollars from uh, not Biden. Sorry. Uh, Trump's taking like a hundred million dollars from Miriam Adelson to annex the West bank. And then Kamala Harris here is better than Biden showing more willingness on this front. And with half of Democrats not showing up to Netanyahu's address, that means that there's a, 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 a crack in the door with the party right now that hopefully we can exploit. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I think um, uh, in, in time will tell if her rhetoric gets stronger and um, um, if this also changes the calculation for Netanyahu. Uh, two weeks ago, Netanyahu thought that Donald Trump was going to be president and uh, in in six months and that he was going to get uh, free reign and if he could hold out to that time. And now he uh, may be making the calculation that he's not going to get a better um, uh, deal uh, than what uh, Biden is offering him. Or, you know, he's not going to get a more sympathetic um, U.S. president than Biden, which I think is true. I think it would be, um, you know, outside of Trump uh, or outside of, frankly, you know, significant portion of the Republican Party. Um, I don't think he would get a, a more sympathetic uh, ear than uh, than Trump, but uh, it, the calculation is is shifted for Netanyahu, I would imagine. So we will see what happens in the coming days, coming weeks. Um, but again, you know, uh, I, I don't I don't think that Harris's uh, rhetoric is going to be sufficient for uh, some folks. But um, again, it's also uh, it's definitely better than than Biden's for what it's worth. Um, and and I trust someone like Trita uh, Parsi and others uh, like uh, Lily Greenberg Call, who uh, I think that's her name. I'm sorry. Her first name's Lily, uh, who was one of the uh, administration officials who resigned from the uh, from the Biden administration in protest of the Gaza policy saying that there's more optimism and that these little symbolic gestures within the context of international diplomacy, they're meant to indicate things, even though they're not explicit and it is insufficient. It just means only that she can be pressured. And I think that she can be. Yeah, I think that's the uh, the point. And, and we'll, we'll talk about this dynamic, too, because it cuts both ways. Um, there's an opportunity uh, for her to be pressured on um, on Israel in a way that I think uh, Biden was not uh, pressurable. Um, and, uh, but that, that also cuts the other way too. And we'll talk about uh, the sort of ongoing campaign to get her to roll back some of the antitrust enforcement that has taken right. place during the Biden administration. Hey folks, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and check out our daily show. We do it every day at 12 PM Eastern for about two and a half hours. We even take phone calls. You should check that out.